Welcome to Weird Scotland, the podcast where we delve into the strange and unexpected corners of Scottish history. I'm your host Colin MacDonald and today we're unravelling the tale of the infamous Scone Letters, a bizarre episode where accusations of witchcraft and treason collided, pulling in nobles, servants and even royalty. Set in 17th century Scotland, this is a story of paranoia, power and the dark shadows that haunted the reign of King James VI. Our story takes us to Scone, a town famous for the Stone of Destiny where Scottish kings were crowned. But today we're not talking about kingship or coronations. Instead, we're exploring a series of mysterious letters sent from Scone that sparked a scandal involving dark magic and political treachery. At the heart of this tale is Andrew Henderfoun, Chamberlain of Scone. In July 1608, Henderfoun sent a letter to King James VI that would send ripples of suspicion across Scotland. He claimed to have uncovered dangerous secrets about one of the most powerful men in the country, David Murray, Lord Scone, also known as Viscount Stormont. Henderfoun's letter hinted at a conspiracy, suggesting Lord Scone's involvement in acts of treason against the Crown. But there was something darker at play. Whispers of witchcraft and the supernatural lingered in the margins of the accusations. This was no ordinary political dispute. It was happening at a time when King James VI, famously obsessed with the occult, was deeply fearful of witches and dark forces. In fact, James had written a treatise on the subject, Demonology, after he became convinced that a coven of witches had plotted to kill him during a stormy sea voyage from Denmark in the 1590s. With his heightened fears of the supernatural, Henderfoun's claims could have been seen as more than mere political backstabbing. They hinted at the possibility of black magic, something King James took very seriously. But who was David Murray, Lord Scone? His background added fuel to the fire. Murray had been granted the lands of Scone after the infamous Gowrie Conspiracy in 1600, a plot where the powerful Ruthven family allegedly attempted to kidnap or murder King James. The plot failed and the Ruthvens were executed, but the stain of treason remained on those connected to them. By inheriting the Ruthven lands, Lord Scone was already walking a dangerous line. Now, with Henderfoun's letter accusing him of treachery, that line was about to get even thinner. Henderfoun's letter wasn't just a warning, it was a weapon. In a time when words had the power to topple governments and condemn people to death, a single letter could unravel someone's life. Henderfoun claimed to have evidence that could expose Lord Scone as a traitor, but the stakes were much higher than politics alone. In the paranoid atmosphere of King James VI's reign, where fear of witchcraft was rampant, treason and witchcraft were often intertwined, what followed was a tense back and forth of letters and accusations. Henderfoun's enemies struck back, accusing him of slander, dishonesty and even suggesting that he himself might be dabbling in the dark arts. In a world where a mere accusation of witchcraft could lead to execution, this was no small matter. Lord Scone, for his part, denied all accusations and wrote his own letters defending his honour and loyalty to the Crown. So, what really happened? We may never know the full truth. The Scone letters stirred up a storm of suspicion and fear. But there's little evidence to suggest that Henderfoun's accusations were ever conclusively proven. What we do know is that the political and social fallout was immense. Lord Scone managed to clear his name and continue his service to the Crown, while Henderfoun's fate remains unclear. Some believe he was silenced, his claims swept aside in the murky world of court intrigue. Others suggest that he may have fallen victim to the very conspiracies he sought to expose, caught in the dangerous games of power and paranoia. The story of the infamous 
scone letters is a chilling reminder of the fear and superstition that gripped Scotland in the early 1600s, at a time when the line between treason and witchcraft was razor thin, even a simple letter could spark chaos and ruin lives. Andrew Henderfound's letters may have been a desperate cry for justice, but they also serve as a stark example of the power of words to fuel suspicion and stoke fear. In the end, the letters from Scone remain one of the many strange and unsettling episodes from a kingdom steeped in intrigue, witchcraft and political ambition. They remind us that in King James VI Scotland, no one was truly safe from the threat of treason or from the spectre of witchcraft. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Weird Scotland. If you enjoyed today's story, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review and tune in next time as we uncover more strange and unexpected stories from Scotland's past. Until then, keep your wits about you and remember, Scotland's history is never quite as serene as it seems. Slentham Hath.